So this is finally my review for the A12-9800 AMD Bristol Ridge APU. As you know, AMD has completed their lineup of Zen-based high-performance chips with Ryzen 3 just some weeks ago, but hasn't yet released anything for the sub-$100 market. That has changed now with the retail launch of their Bristol Ridge-based entry-level lineup. Bristol Ridge is based on the Excavator architecture. Initially, Excavator was supposed to be the last iteration of AMD's Bulldozer-based FX line. But when AMD figured out that Bulldozer will never be able to compete against Intel, they left the high-end segment for some time, began to work on Zen, and turned Excavator into an energy-efficient mobile core. Excavator came to market already in the year 2015 as Carrizo, exclusively for mobile. One year later, AMD finally launched Excavator also for desktop, in form of their Bristol Ridge lineup, but only for OEMs. Bristol Ridge, also named Carrizo version 2, is the same chip like the one launched in 2015, but with a refined process and newly activated features that allow for higher clock speeds. Actually, half of the gains in CPU and GPU performance came from working with global foundries to improve the existing 28 nanometer manufacturing process. Before we go to the benchmarks, let's have a look at the specs of the A12. It comes with four excavator cores clocked up to 4.2 GHz, eight GCN 1.2 cores, the same as in Fiji, clocked up to 1.1 GHz. It has eight PCIe lanes, supports DDR4 2400 up to dual channel mode, and is not unlocked, but we will talk about that in a moment. It also supports 4K HEVC, 4K H. 264 and VP9. Officially the A12 is locked, meaning you cannot set its multiplier manually, but after testing several mainboards, turns out that ASUS allows you to set the multiplier along with many other options on a B350 mainboard or higher. Now to the test setups for the benchmarks. We have the A12 on an Asus Prime B350MA and 8GB of DDR4-2400 memory in dual channel mode and the Pentium G4560 on an ASRock H110M DVS Revision 3 and also 8GB of DDR4-2400 in dual channel mode. Now to the gaming tests. The iGPU tests are all done in 768p medium settings, the CPU tests are done in 1080p medium to high settings, and Tomb Raider, as an exception in the iGPU test suite, is in 1080p.
the A12 has a TDP of only 65 watts and you maybe ask yourself how is it even possible that it can have 4.2 gigahertz clocks on CPU and 1.1 gigahertz on the GPU core well it's not always possible the APU throttles it throws pretty smart so uh, it can keep the balance between CPU and GPU load and in most cases it lets the GPU run at full speed and throttles the CPU as we can see here in this example in Battlefield 1 Now to the energy consumption of the system running in A12. In idle we have 26.2 watts, under load running fire strike we have 92.4 watts. So all the iGPU tests were run at a pretty low resolution, which is normal for a APU. But can the A12 also run games in 1080p? Yes, it can. Some games. Let's look at four of them. Okay, you've got a warning for the race director for cutting the track. Try and respect the track limits, keep them between the white lines. So that was my first review I ever made. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have inputs, let me know in the comment section. I have to say it was a pretty impressive piece of hardware, especially for an APU. It has relatively weak CPU cores, but they are fast enough for doing normal office work, surfing, browsing, watching videos. The iGPU is without competition, I think. It's the strongest iGPU out there especially for the price. You get pretty good 720p gaming at mostly 60 frames per second if you want, if you lower if you want to lower the settings and some games even run at 1080p in pretty playable frame rates. But knowing there's an Athlenix 4 out there or a Pentium G4560 for only about 50 or 60 bucks you might think about getting one of those two and pair them with a separate graphics card. Think about it. See ya.